My BFI player choice this week is a raw and ragged collaboration from director Abel Ferrara and performer writer Zoe Lund with a jaw-droppingly intense and arguably career-best performance by leading man Harvey Keitel, Bad Lieutenant. Listen to me, sister. Listen to me good. The other cops will just put these guys through the system. The juveniles. They'll walk. Get it? But I'll beat the system and do justice. Real justice. The origins of Bad Lieutenant lie in a real-life 90s news story about a nun who was raped in New York City, a story that Lund and Ferrara refashioned into a quasi-religious latter-day parable about damnation and redemption. Keitel is the police lieutenant whose moral compass seems indistinguishable from the criminals he pursues. He takes drugs, gambles away his money, and sexually harasses two young women who he pulls over under the cover of police work. It's a wretched, vice-ridden life, summed up by a scene in which Keitel is confronted with a vision of Christ and sobbingly admits that, I did so many bad things. Several of those bad things, such as a scene of the preparation and injection of heroin involving London Keitel, got Ferrara's film into trouble with British censors who cut it for home viewing after the Video Recordings Act was needlessly tightened up in the mid-90s. Those cuts, which also included the rape scene, have since been reinstated, but it's worth remembering just how troublesome Bad Lieutenant seemed when it was first released, despite the fact that it's clearly a Catholic morality tale writ large. Over the course of the story, we see Keitel's sinner wrestle with his own vile soul, fired into rage by an act of forgiveness which he cannot understand. Only when the lieutenant himself learns to forgive will his torment end, however violently. Something of a cult classic, Bad Lieutenant was revisited by producer Ed Pressman in Werner Herzog's 2009 Bad Lieutenant Port of Call New Orleans, a tonally very different film that was neither a sequel nor a remake. As for Ferrara's original, more than 30 years after it first premiered at Cannes, it's lost none of its incendiary power.